Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty has just launched, and whether you're getting back into the game for the DLC or 2.0, a lot of things have changed. In this video today, I'm going to go over the new skill progression system and how you can level up those skills. If you're new to my channel, the way I do things here is by upfronting the knowledge of my videos, and you can stick around to see if it's the one for you. So without further ado, let me just kind of quickly go through the new skills, like the, the progression tree of the new, like um, it's called skill progression in the game. So you've got Headhunter, you've got Netrunner, Shinobi, Solo, um, Engineer. Those are, those are the ones I'm talking about. So just really quickly to level those up, Headhunter, you just pretty much need to kill people, particularly things with headshots. Of course, those things are going to really going to give you any kind of additional experience bonus here, but also pistols, revolvers, silenced weapons, knives, axes, throwing weapons, all that stuff is going to give you experience towards headhunter for net runner. This is going to be a very passive one, but pretty much anytime you do any kind of hacking, any hacking, hack into a terminal, do any kind of quick hacks, hack a, a camera, anything like that is going to earn you net runner experience. For Shinobi, it's pretty much bladed weapons, rifles, and machine guns, I'm sorry, submachine guns, as well as kind of like acrobatic maneuvers, like running, dashing, sliding, climbing, those kind of things, coupled with maybe killing someone, but pretty much katanas, machetes, chainsaws, mantis blades, those are going to predominantly increase your Shinobi skill. Now, Solo was probably the one you maybe have not earned any experience in, and you might be wondering how you get it. Well, maybe maybe it's just me because of my playthrough, but it's shotguns, light machine guns, clubs, fists, gorilla arms, pretty much blunt weapons. The opposite of Shinobi, which is using assault rifles, um, your SMGs, and bladed weapons, right? So it's, it's kind of the opposite of the two. Um, and then lastly... We've got Engineer here. Engineer is going to be linked towards using smart weapons, projectiles, uh, cyberware, also any kind of crafting. So if you do any kind of upgrading from a base component to an uncommon component or from uncommon into a rare component, that's going to give you engineering skill. So that's pretty much the too long didn't watch this entire video. If that's all you wanted to know, please feel free to go ahead and shut the video down. Before you do, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Each one of those things does help me out in a really huge way. I have like 86% of my viewers are unsubbed, so I'm trying to change that metric the best I can come the end of the year. You can jump ahead to any part of this video that interests you the most using the, the chapters in both the timeline and the description. And don't forget to check me out on Twitch where I stream this game and a number of other ones. But let's get started here on the new skill progression system in Cyberpunk 2077. Loading into the game, let's take a look at the new skill progression system. So you come over here into character, lower right corner, you'll see skill progression. Now you've probably earned some of these rewards as you've played through. I just recently made a brand new save because I wanted to experience Liberty, Vent, Phantom Menace, whatever. In, however, I wanted a new save, so I did. So <laughs> we're going to start here with uh, Headhunter and go over that one first because it's probably the one that makes the most sense to go over first again. Now, unfortunately, you can't hover over this to get any kind of information. But again, just to recap here in case you missed it in the beginning, Headhunter is going to be given, uh, experience in Headhunter is going to be given by doing any kind of killing for the most part. Um, headshots are going to give you a little bit more of a experience bonus here, but pretty much any kind of specialized forms of combat can also give you additional experience any kind of weak point hitting anything like that silence weapon takedowns um, using a throwing knife to take someone down those will give you shinobi experience but it also gives you headhunter experience and sometimes you can get them in two different kind of categories it's very weird but um silence weapons knives axes throwing weapons pistols revolvers all that is really going to attribute here towards headhunter and again pretty much just killing people um Assault rifles, precision rifles, anything like that. It's not relegated exclusively to those weapons, so don't think that. Now, of course, too, we are also going to see bonuses. Now, this will be true for every single one of these. You can see it's in increments of five. So you get 12 sets of these. Every five um, rank ups, you're going to unlock an additional, um, I guess you could say bonus. A bonus is probably it's a skill progression reward, so additional reward here. So you get visibility decrease uh, or decreases visibility to enemies by 10%, 10% um, headshot damage and 10% damage against uh, vulnerabilities. So just kind of leaning into the, what that headhunter does. A perk point, no weapon sway when crouch, which is awesome, decrease visibility to enemies by 10%. And now you're going to start to see some kind of um, repeat 
bonuses. So 15% on headshot and vulnerabilities, perk points, so on and so forth. And you can just hover over these in the game. 30% faster when crouching, so on and so forth. And the last two are typically ones that are always going to be more substantial. And we'll focus on these for the rest of our skill discussion points. So damage bonuses from being undetected outside of combat persist for three seconds after entering combat. You get a nice little bonus. And 15% optical camel charge when neutralizing an enemy in one of the following ways while undetected during focus mode, during dead eye mode, or with the thrown weapon. Now, those focus and dead eye modes can be certain things that are relegated to actual uh, perks from the, your attributes. So, or it's a part of your uh, cyberware stuff like that. So, your implants could give you focus or dead eye. It'll even say, "Hey, this will give you a three seconds of focus or dead eye if someone uh, sees you or whatever the situation is." So, if you're brand new to the game, you don't know what those are. That's how you get access to them. So for Netrunner, we're going to see another one that is pretty passive. You're going to get this one a lot simply by doing any hacks, quick hacks, hacking into any of those terminals. But most importantly, too, interacting with objects in the environment that might be pulled off of your intelligence. So this is one of those ones that you can kind of hit a little bit of a roof if you don't have a technical ability or intelligence investment here, where technical ability is going to allow you to hack into all those wall um uh, jack in locations, right? Or intelligence or tech ability can also help you with using certain levels of hacks or, or actually getting access to certain tech ability doors that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. So that's going to give you more experience in the progression of your net runner. And you'll notice too, these names are, are reminiscent from the tabletop RPG, which is awesome. But with Netrunner, what is nice here is that you get a ton of additional RAM. You also get perk points, but I think you're going to get like two or three additional pieces of RAM, like you're increased RAM by one. Um, and this is all going to layer, of course, with your cyberware and however you try to go about increasing your RAM, even if you're jumping into the respective uh, skill of intelligence or what have your attribute of, um, of um, intelligence. But... This also applies stuff to smart weapons. So like rank 20 here, for example, lock on range with smart weapons, even though smart weapons gives you experience towards engineer. So there are a lot of these that will overlap with each other, like we were talking about with Headhunter and Shinobi. So keep those things in mind. A lot of these don't operate within a silo. They will have a little bit of an overlap here. Um, let's jump to the very end here. So 10% health loss from using quick hacks during overclock. And when active, Overclock now reveals enemies within 10 meters and allows you to quick hack non-netrunner enemies through cover. So you get a nice little bit of uh, layered uh, capabilities there with your final two on Netrunner. Next up is Shinobi, and Shinobi is linked very closely to the Reflex attribute. Most of the stuff that the Reflex attribute gives you bonuses to applies to Shinobi. And I think that they're, they've kind of done this somewhat in the way that each one of these skills does apply heavier to one attribute more than the others. But again, there is overlap. So you're using here assault rifles, SMGs, katanas, machetes, chainsaws, or mantis blades like we talked about before. But you're also sneaking around. Well, I guess not necessarily. You don't get experience for sneaking around as a shinobi. It's more the acrobatic side of things. Like running, dashing over something, dodging out of the way, and then slicing someone with a katana. Throwing your uh, uh, sword. and I'm sorry, throwing a dagger, then following up with a katana swing. If you were lucky enough to get those things in the heist mission. Just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. It's this guy and that guy. Um, oh, that's that's not the right uh, katana, but still, it's a, a katana you get from the heist mission. But Shinobi is, again, that focus on bladed weapons specifically and assault rifles and SMGs. Um, getting a headshot with an assault rifle will level up Shinobi and Headhunter, like I said. So just keep those things in mind. You will be getting a little bit of a, a overlap here. But you'll get you get other things like increase to movement speed here, increase accuracy for a short time after dodging. Um, again, more increased accurate uh, increased movement speed as you kind of progress through this. Da uh, uh, stamina reduction from dodging and dashing, which is pretty crucial, but also layered into that reflex attribute. There's a lot of those reductions to stamina cost in one specific portion of the reflex tree. Uh, but 25% damage with fast attacks, air dashing, and sliding automatically reloads 20% of your equipped weapon. When attacking from midair or while time is slowed, low stamina does not affect ranged accuracy or melee attack speed. And there's a lot of cyberware that can tap into this. It's really, really sick. Or the, whatever the hell it's called, the, the non-hacking operating system. Uh, there, there it is. There, the, When the Sandivista is active, 40% crit chance, no stamina cost for any type of movement, which is really, really, really sick. Our next one is solo, and it's the one that I have probably the least investment in because I am not going with any amount of 
body for the most part i'm pretty much only using it for the per health per attribute and even then very minimal but all the things within this tree really jump into the skill progression for solo because solo is using shotguns it's using light machine guns it's using blunt weapons of all sorts club fist clubs fists gorilla arms all those big heavy style of items and with that you become a very like heavy character you have your um carrying capacity increased by 50 here but then at 25 it goes up by an additional 100 you get healthier at 10 and then health again at 30 so you become a very tanky character and at 45 here 25 percent damage with strong attacks and quick melee attacks you know again this just to kind of reinforce that point this doesn't mean you have to play exclusively as a heavy character. This can apply to a character playing as a shinobi that's using bladed weapons. This is strong attacks and quick melee attacks, not strong attacks and quick melee attacks with blunt weapons. So if you want these things to overlap, they definitely can. And the bonuses are more often than not their passive bonuses to a certain style of damage versus, say, uh, where is it? Uh, the one here. This is 20 percent lock on range with smart weapons right so some of these will be specific but i think for the most part you're looking at a lot of bonuses that are wide sweeping so you can really spice this skill progression around in a lot of different ways but the last two here when adrenaline rush is active adrenaline decays 50 percent slower and cannot decay below 10 percent and when berserk is active 30 percent enemy health threshold to perform finishers 50 percent health from performing finishers and 30 percent berserk reduction or duration Lastly, we have Engineer, which is then linked closely to Tech Ability. Now, in the past, we needed to go down the Tech Ability tree to unlock the uh, perks to craft certain items. That is not the way it works now. So if I were to simply jump into my inventory and go into crafting, any type of crafting here that I decide to do is going to give me experience. In fact, I think I'll do, I'll do one real quick here, see if it shows on the left. Okay, I have to jump out of this this menu to show that off. But um, the skill progression here for Engineer is linked to crafting. Also, though, using smart weapons, projectiles in that quick slot that you would use if you're on a, a PC, that's that middle mouse button. My dog just burped and it was ridiculous. It scared the crap out of me. But projectiles, cyberware, socketing cyberware into your character does increase that engineering. Um, bolts, stuff like that. Any kind of thrown explosives, damage over time effects to triggered by like elemental abilities, that's all gonna fall under the, ele the uh, engineering skill progression. And what's nice from the skill progression is you're gonna get something, and this is one that, I, that, that very similar to Netrunner is gonna be very passive. I think even someone who is focusing, uh, let's just say strictly as a solo type of character, they're still gonna have a good amount of engineering because if you, if you, if you don't know this, you should be using your crafting abilities to make these item components because these item components are now used to passively upgrade all of your weapons and items so you want to make sure you're constantly producing these and since you get so many common um crafting components it's very easy to make tons of tier two tier three crafting components that alone is going to level up your engineer like crazy and then from there that's the engineer is going to level up as well whenever you take that cyberware and why this is all really good and important is a you're going to increase your armor by simply leveling this up by 15 and 25 at 25 and then you're also going to increase your cyberware capacity so you can have better augmentations on more of them whatever it is you get perk points here you get health effectiveness take a look at this one at 50 30 percent to all cyberware stat modifiers that is really 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 good and you're just going to have it passively gaining if you're not focusing on smart weapons and projectiles like i said this is just always going to be beneficial to you but then this one right here 10 percent damage with bold shots if you're doing that chain lightning now also sets enemies on fire but when fury is active you occasionally release an emp blast so you have all these things that kind of come together for your skill progression that gives you a really good idea of how this new system works in cyberpunk 2077 so to close our video out what i want to talk about really quickly is the new attribute system right so you get your attributes and you get your perk points and you use them to increase your attributes and you have one two three four levels of each attribute and each per uh, uh, investment of points here attribute points you have break points here, let's go to another one i haven't unlocked all the way you have break points at 9 15 and 20. So investing five points in this case into this to make this nine unlocks this whole entire tree. 
This is different than the way it was before, right? We had this one central node and the central node would web out and the things that you went left, right, up or down would start to get more and more difficult. You had to have more investment to attribute points. This is a much more easy to digest and linear system. I'm not going to go through each and every single one of these because you can just simply do that in the game. I'm just going to quickly talk about some stuff really quickly here. Um, as I said that word twice. So again, what you're really trying to do here is use these uh, attribute points to unlock uh pro phenom or legend and then you're going to use your perk points to then invest them into these individual nodes and you'll see here that you kind of have like a node within individual clusters outside of it or or parent or parent node with individuals one that kind of modify it which is really cool and almost every single one of these is going to have some sort of vehicle perk and these the new vehicle system that was added into the game with the way that um weapons on the vehicles can be added in and stuff like that. These things all kind of play very well together, as you can see. Um, and it just depends on what you're kind of going with and, and so on and so forth. I, it depends on the character you're going into. There's no real reason to kind of jump heavily into that. But for instance, my character is going to go hard in the paint on reflexes. So that means I'm going to go into dash type stuff where I get air dash capabilities, or I jump heavier into and using uh, bladed weapons and then using my bladed weapon to then block shots with it as you can see unlocks the ability to block incoming projectiles with blades this consumes stamina and eventually i can deflect those shots back at my opponent this makes me even better finisher blade runner blah 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 which is a really cool like fatality as you can see up to slaughterhouse now you kind of have these capstone perks that uh give you a lot of benefits for that play style you have in mind that got you there um and some of them too, depending on like, okay, tech ability, for example, edge runner allows you to exceed your cyberware capacity by up to 50 points to the cost of minus 5.5% max health per point. When you neutralize an enemy during combat, there is a 0.1% chance for each point you're over capacity, you will enter a fury state. In this state, you gain this, 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 and this. So you can see that these capstone perks can be very game changing for that specific attribute right um and it just depends on which kind of character you're playing where is intelligence um spill over when overclock is active 50 percent chance here of uh, the last quick act to fill a queue has a minus 50 percent ram cost or this one when overclock is active smart weapons gain instant target lock uh, it just depends on how you're playing the game adrenaline rush uh, this is, goes down with blunt weapons. You again have a lot of uh, tanky abilities right here. You have all of your uh, shotgun and LMG stuff over here. So a lot of really fun and cool things have changed with the new attribute and perk and skill system with Cyberpunk 2077. This is not linked to the DLC, in case you were wondering. This is the 2.0 update that came for free. Everyone has access to this. You don't need to download Phantom Liberty to get it. You just simply need to install the game, and the game will have all of these new things added into it. So if you want to say go really hard in the paint on getting a ton of Chrome, getting a ton of cyberware, you'd go really heavily into the technical ability tree. Or if you want to do a ton of throwing weapons and pistols and, and sneaking around, then you'd go heavily into the cool tree as I'm starting to do right here on my character. Or maybe you want to play a character that's just using nothing but hacks. You are a net runner. You're going crazy. Well, you're going to jump here into your intelligence tree and go into the ones that make the sense for the type of hacking you want to do. Do you want to do smart weapons? Do you want to do uh, quick hacks? Do you want to do actual hacks? Whatever it is, you have all these kind of uh, distinction here. Again, really quickly, we, we, did, we did this already, but shotguns, LMGs, tankiness, and um, blunt weapons for body, your uh, body. So Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how the new attribute system, how the new skill progression system works. And this gives you a little bit of a teaser. So if you're on the fence about it, you weren't sure if you were going to jump into 2.0, let alone Phantom Liberty, this helps kind of put you over. Uh, honestly, if, if I were to give you like a, a, a real quick review of the state of the game, because of this system alone, it just feels so much more focused to play a character. I don't feel like I'm kind of hodgepodging all over the place to try to unlock very little specific niche things that I didn't like. Oh, okay, I guess I want to have the ability to see the trail of my grenade when I throw it without using a cybernetic. Well, that's just in the game by default now. There's not even a perk attached to it. Hey, you know what? There's some things I want to craft, but I really don't want to go hard on it. Well, now you can just craft everything. It's not really linked to anything anymore. There, there are, there is crafting stuff in tech ability, but it's not like gated in the sense that you can't craft iconic or legendary items without a certain uh, perk or what have you.
So the game is far more accessible to a wider range of characters. And you can now fine tune your character based off of the actual gameplay you want to do versus the perks you think you need because it's what makes the game accessible to you. So hopefully, again, that's a quick little breakdown and it helps kind of put you over the fence for Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk? Man, Cyberpunk 2077. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.